the doc is back in the office as the Alvin Parker Coaches Show is underway. Week two of the season coming off a most impressive win in Frankfurt last Saturday, 69-7 to over the thoroughbreds of Kentucky State. The whooping stick was brought from Lombardi Street to Frankfurt. And here to talk about it, as always, head coach of Virginia Union, Dr. Alvin Parker. That was a most impressive performance. I know you're going to pick apart some things that you didn't like as a head coach, but the overall uh, performance of the team, I think, was most impressive. Oh, definitely. You know, for a first game to kind of come out and kind of be clicking on all cylinders, you know, was something that I was impressed by. You know, I know those guys can play well, and I knew the capabilities of what, what we can do. But to kind of see it all come together in the first game, you know, against some, a different, somebody in a different jersey was something that I was impressed by, you know. But like you said, as a coach, I can always find things <laughs> that I can pick apart. But, you know, I, I was proud of the guys. So, you know, happy with the victory. I didn't start off prosperous. <laughs> first drive, R.J. Rosales throws the pick. They scored. Didn't give up a rushing touchdown. It was a passing touchdown. But then after that, um, it seemed like you guys got your feet underneath yourselves. Um, you didn't panic. I think you mentioned that this week in your press conference. You didn't panic. RJ didn't panic. What did you see out of him that gave you the confidence that he wasn't going to panic? He wasn't going to make that that bad decision? How the, how collectively the guys just didn't seem to be bothered by that first that first turnover? Oh, uh, When I speak to how probably how me and RJ reacted, we both were pretty calm and, you know, um, was just kind of on to the next thing. But the mm -hmm. team all kind of had his back and everybody else was calm. You know, and I think that shows the maturity of our team. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when, when something bad happens, you know, uh, we always kind of tell those guys don't get too low with the low or too high with the highs, you know. And it was one of those moments that you can kind of use that teaching that teaching moment for the whole team. And, you know, something that we kind of been repetitive about and those guys came back and did it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't, I don't think I've ever been a part of a, a, a team that went, you know, scored 69 unanswered points. <laughs> I was glad you know, that. Um, so that right there just showed their resilience and, and kind of what we've been preaching all along. So... You know, again, we fought back from it, and it was something that, again, we used as a teaching moment. But, you know, it was good to have that after that. We always talk about Jaden, what he did. Another uh, great performance by him, 214 yards passing, eighth 200-yard-plus afternoon for him in his career. But the team as a whole, nearly 350 yards on the ground. So it wasn't just him. You had other guys to contribute on the, uh, on the ground game on Saturday. I was happy to see the way the backs carried the ball. Um, and they had that many uh, yards, and, and not to put anything on the ground speaks volumes about that, that backfield. But, you know, again, we've been kind of talking about the depth that we have in that room, and those guys got to show the, the world on Saturday. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so all those guys, you know, did something good. You saw Curtis Allen, who, who does what he normally does. Uh, you saw Jerome Jones, who, who no Bradley really has seen. You know, he got out there and did some good things. The same thing with Roberto Alvarez. He got there. He got out there and did some things that nobody had ever seen. You know, and we was able to get the freshman and get him a couple carries. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was it was it was a good thing. So we were happy to see it. Do you feel this year you have the talent in that running back room that can be just as effective as you guys did last year? Because I think you set, I believe, some conference record. No other school had three different running backs be named running back of the week in one season. You guys did that. Last year, Jada, running back of the week, starting off this season. But do you feel you have the depth from one to, say, three or four that there's no significant drop-off from Jada to the next guy to the next guy? I think all of those guys, you know, um, have their own little style of kind of doing things. They bring something different to the game. Um, and they all are very capable, extremely capable. But um, I think what makes those guys, you know, um, they're good. But what makes them even better is the guys that they run behind. Mm -hmm. So as long as we stay consistent right there, I think any of those guys will be able to kind of carry it and make something happen with it. So, you know, um, but again, it doesn't take away from any of their talent. They're all special in their own right. You know, um, but we have a lot of special guys up front, too, that kind of make it happen for those guys. We'll talk more about them because two of them. Received superlatives from the CIAA. One was named Rookie of the Week, Adrian Crespin. And also, Offensive Lineman of the Week went to Joseph Rounds. And I think a couple of others from uh, in the preseason were named preseason all CIAA. But you were very high on this group from the offseason that you felt this Correct. this group, the starting five was strong and the and the depth behind them were, were, were just as strong. Yeah. You know, um, Crespin is, is a red shirt freshman for us. And he played awesome on Saturday. You know, we were, we were extremely uh, happy with the way that he played. Um, and Joe was a starter last year's center for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to get two linemen, uh, to be named offensive linemen, you know, in some form of the week, mm -hmm. you know, um, was something that, you know, that group deserved. You know, they earned the right to do that. You know, we 
set school records in total yards and 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 those guys up front, including those two guys who received those superlatives, you know, help do that. So mm-hmm. it's not a lot I can say about those guys. Those guys don't get a lot of noteworthy stuff in the stat sheet. Um, but you know, our team, you know, we we, we jump on those guys' backs and we ride it. No question. Uh, you mentioned that 674 yards of offense. That was a school record. And we mentioned a ground attack over th- nearly 350 yards on the ground. Byers had over 200 in the game. But we got to talk about that defense because after okay. they gave up that that short touchdown, we, we talked about that last week a little bit about not giving up the rushing touchdowns. There could be some fluke plays. That happened on Saturday, but it was a passing touchdown. They put it on shutdown mode after that to include two pick sixes. Now you have five, I think, five interception returns for touchdowns in the last year. That's tied for first in all of Division II college football. You guys were like a machine defensively after that first touchdown. Absolutely. You know, um, offensively, you know, they were put in a bad situation. Um, Get those guys the ball inside the five-yard line right there on the first uh, series of the game. You know, um, so, you know, we ended up giving up a passing touchdown right there. And um, after that point, um, I believe totally – you know, those guys gave up uh, about 90 yards the rest of the mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so in two interceptions and four sacks and um, minimum yard rushing, it, it, it was it was an amazing, <laughs> amazing output <laughs> by those guys. So, you know, um, but again, we expect nothing less. You know, those guys expect nothing less of their sales. You know, I um, mean, again, it's so many guys over there that made contributions. I think everybody that, you know, rode the defensive bus got a chance to play. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so when you got that many guys playing and that many guys making plays, you know, um, it, it's, it's, it makes it fun to watch. So, you know, we were extremely happy with their play as well. How satisfactory or satisfying is the fact that you can just say, Coach Pointer, you do your thing. I got so much confidence in you. I'm really not going to mess with what you guys do on that side of the ball and just can kind of focus on the other things that you need to do to kind of, you know, to get this team rolling. And for him to be – was a defensive – coordinator of the year, I believe, yeah, in, in division, assistant coach of the assistant year, of the yeah. year. Mm-hmm. for him to have that game plan down, like you mentioned, 90 yards allowed, 28 through the air, two pick sixes, four sacks. How, yeah. how satisfying is that for you as a head coach to know you got a guy like that, that you can, that you can lean on and he's going to do what he's going to do? Um, I guess that, well, the first thing is the word trust. I trust him. You know, um, we've been together since our college days. Mm-hmm. You know, we live next door to one another <laughs> on campus. So, you know, we've been together that long, so to speak. And, you know, um, I know his philosophy. I know his style. Mm-hmm. You know, I know when something on, not going the way he like it. But, you know, uh, he probably want me to leave him alone sometime. <laughs> but um, for the most part, I, I trust him. That's the biggest thing. Him and the rest of the defense, that's, I trust I trust all of those guys. You know, um, and that's how we've been kind of getting the output that we've been getting. You know, um, and, and you got to understand from the head coach's seat, uh, <laughs> I, I can see anything and I question it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's just what it is. But those guys respect, you know, respect me enough to make sure they know that, you know, I get it done and get it done the fashion that we want to get it done. So, you know, I'm I'm happy with the entire defensive staff and what they're getting out of those guys from over there. 69 to 7, I mentioned 69 on answer points for Union. And they hold Kentucky State first game of the year to just 90 yards of total offense and no rushing touchdowns allowed. When we come back, on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show. We're going to talk to the four defensive linemen that had a hand in that performance last Saturday. That's coming up next as the Alvin Parker Coaches Show continues right after this. In every athlete, there's a spark, a drive. At Virginia Union University, we turn that spark into a flame. Here, it's more than athletics. It's a journey of dedication, discipline, and determination. Where Panthers chase and catch their dreams with dedicated coaches, a legacy of champions, VUU is where potential meets opportunity. Ready to transform passion into purpose to elevate your game in life? It's time. Join us at Virginia Union University where champions are made on and off the field. Your future starts now. Visit vuu.edu to learn more. Virginia Union University, ignite your potential. Back here on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show, this is our Players Lounge segment. We got the four defensive linemen for Virginia Union, a big reason 
why Kentucky State only scored one touchdown in the game in the first quarter, and that was it. The rest of the game, they were on shutdown the rest of the contest as they were limited to just 90 yards of offense. We got the four defensive linemen. We got Isaac Anderson. We have Mike Jones, defensive lineman of the week in the CIAA. We got Jackie Hilliard and also Isaiah Dickens in the Players Lounge here this evening. Guys, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. Doing Thank you for having us. No problems. It's our pleasure to have you guys here. I know you got to be feeling pretty good after the win. Most definitely. On uh, on Saturday, I want to just get your thoughts about Saturday's game. How the confidence was um, holding the team to you know just not, less than a hundred yards of total offense. How you guys were on, on Saturday? Uh, for me, I just felt like it was a it was great feedback to see how we gelled as uh, gel you know at that level as a team. Uh, man, we came out. I uh, had a little hiccup, and after that, we was going. And um, I love the way how we kept each other up. Mm -hmm. You know, it was no, you know, no whining or anything like that. You know, we picked up our quarterback. We showed him that we had confidence in him. And um, you see how it rolled out for the rest of the game. So that was one of my favorite things that I saw personally. I was going to ask about that. Like you said, the, the short field, you guys gave up the touchdown, and then you guys go on the sideline. What was the conversations like True. at that point? We got y'all. Like, y'all trust us. We trust y'all. We go to war with y'all every week. We practice and prepare with each other. We know we we capable of, like, we get the job done, so. As far as preparation, what did you see on tape that gave you guys confidence that you guys could maybe not hold them to less than 100 of total offense, but you guys, you could you you see something that we, 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 we could do something against these guys? On tape, just looking how they execute certain things, and we was like, we know we go, we know we can outwork them the way they execute their plays, mm -hmm. the way they just go about certain tendencies, we like we we go against this every day with Jada Byers and Coach Parker offense. I was gonna say I seeing that seeing that running back, seeing Jada every day in practice, sure. how does that benefit you guys? How does that help you guys when you face an opponent, maybe not as as the caliber of Jada, but how does that guys how does that help you guys during during the season? Yeah. It helped us basically get in shape too. <laughs> it's like it's like the pursuit drill because you know with Jada in that outside, you gotta be on your horses to go catch him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically like how the game went out. We was pursuing, flying to the ball, and eleven hats to the ball. You are gonna be successful every time. Most definitely. Let's talk about those two pick those two pick sixes. I know you you know you guys played a role in getting those two pick sixes. Back to back drives. Matter sure. of fact. Um, what do you guys remember about those two plays to get uh, the pick sixes? Well, one of them, um, shout out to uh, sophomore Kamari Frederick. Um, and he had a great move on the offensive lineman, rushed the quarterback, and quarterback just threw it to our defensive back. So mm -hmm. um, definitely shout out to Kamari. I know he's not in here right now, but he was definitely a big part of the first one. Uh, I can't remember much of the second one. Uh, I was, to speak on the first one, I, I was out there and – I was like, I turned around, I just see it in his hand. I'm like, oh my goodness, shout out to that boy Donald. But the second one, who was getting water, and they was like, y'all going back out there. And I'm like, dang, we're going back out there again for the third time. <laughs> I was just like, man. It was a blessing, though. Mm -hmm. Five interception returns for touchdowns in the last year. For a defense, when you see that or hear that stat, what goes through your mind? Shoot, somebody catch it. Somebody catch the pick, go block somebody. <laughs> I know we getting a military convoy to the end zone every time. We trying, mm -hmm. trying to help our boys eat. So mm -hmm. We do our job up front. Everybody going to eat. And I think um, the biggest thing, too, we know we got some athletes back there in the uh, defensive back, mm -hmm. defensive back room. So, um, you know, just knowing when those guys get their hand on the football, when it's thrown to them, all right, let's, let's go ahead and put, like you said, uh, let's go ahead and get a – get our hands on somebody, mm -hmm. and we know that we got the athletes to take it all the way back. So, most sure. definitely, shout out to the back end. Sure. What is it like playing for Coach Pointer? It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. No, no. That should have been automatic. So, so uh, yeah, I, I know, okay, let me, let me say something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it took us a moment because, you know, it's so much. We we That just took our breath away right there. Like, it's so much. Like I'm. Good job. It's, Clean it up. It, it took our breath away. Like, Coach Pointer – he a, he a man of few words. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we know we only got so much to – so much, so much. <laughs> so much. Because he's not going to say much at all. Right. So he's not saying much. So if you're not doing so much he like, oh, you're not going to hear him say nothing. So, right. so it's just – it, it feel great playing for him because he got our back and we got his back. 
Sure. Most definitely. I say, um, you know, I've been here the longest out of everybody on this team. So, okay. you know, I've I seen the growth from all the coaches on the coaching mm -hmm. staff. And, um, you know, uh, coming from, what, 20, 2019 to now, you know, uh, like he said, man, a little word. So, you already know <laughs> you got a small room error. But, nah, he uh, – Great coach, you know, any mistakes that we make, he'll pull us to the side. And he'll let us know what we got to be better at and what we can make those corrections. So, and I think we take a lot of his mentality too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, before the games, you know, he letting us know what he expects. Mm -hmm. And he let sure. us know, I'm not worried. And, you know, that comes with us. And, you know, he let us know we, we got to have that mentality. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that's the one biggest thing that we pick up from him. So, you know, that's, that's one thing I can say. When do you know he is upset? Oh, you he know. See it you on know. his face. He gonna let you know. I'm gonna let Isaac say it. You <laughs> see it on his face. Well, <laughs> he gonna let Coach you know. Forner, <laughs> Coach Forner, he's a great guy. He's actually a great guy. <laughs> but it's like <laughs> if you, um, it's not basically get under his skin. It's basically like he get more mad at you for not doing the assignment after you just prepared the whole mm -hmm. week, mm -hmm. doing this assignment, doing the technique clean, and then you get in the game and then you end up out your gap. Mm -hmm. Or you doing something uncharacteristic, and that's when Coach Porter. That's when you, oh, Coach mm -hmm. Porter's not so nice no more. But <laughs> it's just, it's just because you you messed up something that you almost perfected. But mm -hmm. you know that's just Coach Porter for real. He just want yeah. perfection out of everybody. Yeah, you hit it on the head too. I mean, it's more it 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 isn't even anger. It's more so disappointment for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so and that's the worst kind. Yeah, right yeah. Right. he gonna hold you accountable. You don't want to be on that side. I be on that side a lot. <laughs> he gonna hold you accountable <laughs> a lot. Shout out, Coach Warner, man. Okay. That's my guy. Now you got a big game on Saturday. We got about a, about a minute left in the segment, so I want to get each of your thoughts about Hampton going down there to the seven five seven. A couple years ago, you guys won there. Last year wasn't so kind. Um, your thoughts about the game on Hampton, especially going in, uh, before your bye week. Right. It's, a, it's a good team. I feel like we're we're a good team also, so it's gonna be a good game. Um, well respect to Hampton, so I'm, I'm excited about Hampton and similar to Tennessee to Kentucky State, so should be a good game. How's it? Um, hey, it's the next game, baby. And <laughs> Hampton, Hampton, and our way basically in the success that we're trying to provide for our team. So, you know, Hampton got great ball players. Mm -hmm. We got great ball players. It's it's really gonna be a show. Honestly, it's gonna be a show. You do not want to miss this. Yeah. 6 p.m. No, it might be a little chilly in the 7-5. That so. ain't going to be no big deal, right? <laughs> well, that ain't going to be a big deal. What you guys think about Hampton before we let you go? Um, you know, it's going to be an exciting game. You know, um, I think the atmosphere is going to be there. The energy is going to be there. Uh, great team. You know, like I said, they're the most dangerous team right now, which is the next team that we got to play. And um, our goal is to always go 1-0. and So, um, like I said, I know it's going to be a very exciting game. It's going to be fun to show people what we can do, not only on, you know, against Division II uh, mm -hmm. opponents, but, you know, as well as Division One opponents mm -hmm. as well. That is a good test, an uh, FCS opponent for sure. uh, on Saturday. For sure, but shoot, we scrap up how they scrap up. They bleed how we bleed. Mm -hmm. so it's another game. Much much respect to them, but we're coming to handle business. You heard it. The Players' Lounge, 6 o'clock. It'll be on ESPN+. Plus. No, check it. It will be on Flow Sports instead of ESPN+. Plus. Flow Sports for Hampton and Virginia Union Saturday at 6 p.m. Guys, thank you Most for definitely. joining us in thank the you lounge. For thank you for having us. On thank Congrats you so much. Thank you so much. Congrats on uh, your name, defensive, defensive lineman. Line. Line. Jones. Mike Jones. Well. I appreciate Mike it. Shout out my Mike team, Jones. Man. Shout out Coach Parker, Coach Porter, <laughs> Coach Brown. MJ3, <laughs> man. <laughs> He ain't going to run no laps this week based, based <laughs> on that. Coach Parker is going to join us for our final segment to talk more about the Hampton Pirates right after this on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show. The styles you want, the brands you love, with the service you deserve. Better menswear, from formal to casual wear. We carry quality men's clothing at sensible prices, where fashion and service meet affordability. That is better menswear. For some people, university is just another series of classrooms. For others, it's about finding purpose and value as you define what will be your life's work. But when you step foot here, in this place, that's when you find your life's work colliding with legacy to produce an educational experience reaching deeper than you ever thought possible. It's more than books, more than classrooms, more than papers or exams. Virginia Union University is a place where you discover the power of a limitless future. 
All right, back for our final segment on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show. Again, thanks to the guys for joining us, the four defensive linemen, Isaac Anderson, Mike Jones, Jackie Hilliard, and also Isaiah Dickens for spending some time in the lounge. And also congrats to Mike for being named Defensive Lineman of the Week, one of six Panthers that were recognized by the CIAA this past week after their win against Kentucky State. But now we move forward. We move to this Friday, or this Saturday, rather, and it's VUU taking on Hampton. And you kind of mentioned that, Coach, during your media availability this week about something somebody asked about Coach Taylor. He's got some <laughs> ties with both programs. But uh, he's going to kind of – is he going to toe the line uh, this weekend? <laughs> oh, no. He's a Virginia Union <laughs> fan, you know, uh, big time. So but he's excited about it. You know, I think um, he has some Hall of Fame stuff he had to do that Friday. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know he can he can be of Hampton on Friday, but I'm sure when Saturday comes, you know he'll he he'll, he'll be a Panther again. He'll wear that maroon. Absolutely, that maroon is still gray. Um, we touched on it last week before you guys went to Kentucky State. The success you guys have had on the road. And here's a stat: you've won your last. I hope I'm gonna knock on this table because hopefully I won't <laughs> jinx you. You've won your last 16 true road games or neutral site games in the regular season. Your last loss was the last time you went to Hampton in 21. What do you attribute that success on the road to in, in this in this great run? Um, just having a, a great locked in ball club all the time. That's the biggest part. You know, um, I think, you know, like I said, you know, you take it on the road, it's a different, you know, mode of concentration. It's a different mode of focus. And it's a little bit, you know, let dis- less distractions, mm-hmm. you know, that you might receive. But, you know, um, that, that's, that, that's, that's a little bit of news to me, Sean. I knew we played, <laughs> I knew we played well on the road. And I knew we did some good things on the road, but um, you know, ugh, I didn't know that 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 Hampton 16 was the last trainer, home. yeah. So, but that's big time, you know. Um, and that just shows, like I say, the level of concentration these guys have when we jump on that bus. So, you know, that's that's something that's pretty good. Now, one of the few Hampton players that are still on this year's squad from that game is Elijah Burris. He had a big game that night. He had 136 yards on the ground, three touchdowns against you guys. He played well against Morgan State and a losing effort against the Bears. I'm assuming that's what the focus is going to be on uh, this week in preparation for Hampton is trying to slow down Elijah. Oh, he's a big-time player. You know, um, when he gets the ball in his hands, you, you almost hold your breath. <laughs> you know, um, I know the last time we played him, we did. You know, um, he had a lot of big runs in that game and broke a lot of tackles and did a lot of things that, that helped those guys win that last game that we played against him. So we definitely got to have our um, eyes set on him. You know, um, again, he had a big game last week as well. Um, and he's one of those guys that, you know, um, he's kind of like in a sort, you know, I mentioned like he's 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 to them what Jada Byers is to I was us. Gonna say, yeah. You know, so, you know, we know he's pretty special. He can get it done. They kind of, well, last year they went with Zealous at quarterback, and he started the game against Morgan State, but then he went back to the 2022 starter and Mays, who kind of got them close but couldn't get over the hump. Are you preparing to see maybe both on Saturday, or do you think they may go back to Zealous, or they may? How do you? How are you preparing for the possibility of seeing maybe both of those guys this weekend? Um, both of those guys played last weekend, yeah. So we we expect them both of those guys to play this weekend, you know. But every every time we've been down there, they've had a special guy at quarterback. You know, um, the quarterback position for them has always been something that they held a lot of steam in. And, you know, we haven't faced a, a quarterback who couldn't play any time we went down there. <laughs> so we expect nothing less this, this weekend. You know, and both of those guys can get it done. Both of those guys got a lot of game time reps. And both of those guys have won some big ball games. So, mm-hmm. you know, we expect them to see both of those guys, you know. Um, and we know, you know, we got to play a, a perfect game when we go down there on Saturday, not necessarily whoever they put on the field. We got we got to play a perfect game, so we kind of, you know, preaching that to the guys, and, and we want to make sure that we get that done. Guys, was talking about the atmosphere down there on Saturday. I'm assuming a great crowd is going to be expected. Six o'clock, kind of that primetime window. What do you think it's going it's gonna to be like on on Saturday? <laughs> it's been great the last two times we've been down there. You know, um, uh, Virginia Union fans show up and show out, you know, so, you know, uh, you know, definitely half of the stadium is going to be uh, maroon and steel. But, you know, we, we expect our fans are, are kind of uh, ready to see us in action. Uh, a bunch of them made it out to Kentucky State as well. So I think the atmosphere is going to be, you know, good, you know, like like any Union and Hampton game has ever been. Mm-hmm. I think when you go back and you can check all the numbers from any game they've ever played, <coughs> it's always been good attendance because because of the rivalry. So we expect nothing less on Saturday. And they were also the players are always talking about, you know, this is the most important opponent because it's the next game. But I'm assuming it's doubly important because you got to buy after this. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you don't want to go in with the loss. You want to go in at least 2-0 and to get ready for conference play. 
How much is that talked about this week in preparation for for Hampton? Um, uh, kind of like what those guys said. It's the it's the most important game because it's the next one. Mm-hmm. You know, I think we're just kind of keeping the main thing the main thing, and it's just the next ball game. You know, so we we kind of coaching those guys that way, just like we coach against anybody else. You know, um, you know, we'll look to the bye week kind of when we get there because it's going to be the first time we've ever had a bye week since I've been the coach here. <laughs> you know, but um, we're focusing on on our next game, and that's kind of how we're going to take the. The entire year, you know, we're not going to look past anybody. But when we get to that week, we're going to concentrate solely on that opponent. And and this week, we're solely concentrating on Hampton. Can we give a shout out to the conference as a whole this past weekend? <laughs> Three and zero against teams from the SIAC in pretty good fashion uh, across the conference on Saturday. We definitely can. You know, um, I spoke with uh, both Coach uh, Flowers and Coach Frazier um, about the wins. They, uh, they gave me some shout outs. I gave them guys some shout outs because, you know, I was I was impressed by how the CIAA took on the SIAC this weekend. So it was something that was good. You know, when you look back at it and you look at how the thing was matched up, you know, a lot of people had some unknowns. But I think the CIAA kind of answered a lot of those unknowns in terms of, you know, conference versus conference. So, you know, um, shout out to those guys. You know, I told them personally, you know, how proud I was of them they told me personally how proud they was was wasn't me so it it's that camaraderie that we have you know we love each other we just uh probably that one day a year when we play <laughs> right. each other we probably you know i want to want to beat each other but you know i i i want to see our double a to do and show everybody just the brand and ball we play here you know um, so i was happy to see that and, and those guys got national stages with uh, nfl network and espnu mm-hmm. and us being on the national stage with hbcu go all three of us was put on the national stage and came out three and oh i was gonna say that was the other important thing the fact that all three of you did that on a national stage so everybody got to see the union brand the state brand the johnson c smith brand on that level and beating another you know S, you know siac division two conference but that's gonna go a long way hopefully you know some committee members were watching those games that could go a long way uh in november when you know we're looking at strength of schedule and head-to-head matchups those wins could be huge in november absolutely you know um i think any out of conference win you know, those wins go to uh, being in region wins, mm-hmm. you know, division two wins, all the things that check the box when it comes to, like you said, the committees. You know, um, the CIAA checked a whole lot of boxes this weekend. They certainly did. And they could check another big one this weekend, even though it won't count towards playoff <laughs> positioning. A win against an FCS opponent on Saturday will be huge for Virginia Union. Again, that game will be on Flow Sports this Saturday, 6 p.m., Hampton and Virginia Union. Before we go, final thoughts about that game against the Pirates. <laughs> uh, we're just going to keep going through preparation like we normally do. We had a, a pretty good week of practice leading up to the game, you know, um, at this point. So we just we just happy for the chance to compete. You know, um, you know what we're going down there, we're going to face, you know. Um, but, you know, we're ready for the challenge. And I think our guys are ready to play. So, you know, we'll see how things go on Saturday. And we wish you the best of luck this weekend as you face the Pirates uh, this Saturday. Yeah, thanks. All right, thank you guys for joining us here on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show. Thanks to Coach Parker and our guests, Isaac Anderson, Mike Jones, Jackie Hillier, and also Isaiah Dickens. Thank you guys for watching. Join us next week when the doctor returns on the Alvin Parker Coaches Show. I'm Sean Robertson. Good night, everybody.